Philippine National Anthem and the PMAP hymn. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to meet together. Please help us to come together to make this institution reflect your kingdom. Breathe life into our ideas and decisions. Help us build a team that has love and respect at its heart. Give us the strength to continue working for your kingdom in this time of pandemic. Lord, come give us the inspiration to be the best we can be. May we be a shining example of your goodness and truth within, wherever we are. Inspire our thoughts, discussions, and ideas, and continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth for the greater glory of you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Sang Awit ng Pilipinas
Thomas in today's event. Let us all welcome 2015 PMAP National President, Mr. Obet Policarpio at PM. Thank you very much, Richard. Good afternoon, mapagpalang live sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the 2021 Candidates Forum. And there's a bonus session, a free webinar on strategic planning. The resource speaker will be introduced in a little while. Thank you so much for your precious presence in this virtual gathering. Maraming salamat po at pinaunlakan nyo ang aming invitasyon. Sa hapong ito ay makakapanayam natin at sana all makadao pampalad natin soon ang ating mga hinirang na mga candidates. At nandito sila ngayong hapon upang kanilang ipadama no, sa pamagitan ng kanilang pagpapresenta ng kanilang iba't ibang programa para sa PIMA 2022. At hindi ko muna babanggitin kung sino sila. Later on, uh, sila ay uh, introduce sa ating lahat. So maraming salamat po at uh, isang magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. At kayo ay palaging pagpalay ng ating poong may kapal kasama ng inyong mga mahal sa buhay. Ingat po lagi, ito po si Obet Policarpio, naglilingkod. Thank you so much, uh, President, uh, Past President Obet Policarpio, for that warm welcome. Okay, so again, good afternoon to all of you who are joining us in this special learning event. Definitely, this is a very exciting event, a very exciting afternoon, not only because it's payday today or it's 10 days before Christmas, but because aside from the special learning session, we will get to meet all the candidates of our uh, uh, for the Board of Trustees for 2022. Okay, and uh, my name, by the way, is Richard Mamuyak. I am from the Asian Institute of Human Resource Management, and I'll be, uh, I'm very privileged to introduce our speaker for today's webinar. Allow me to share my screen so I could uh, formally present to you this afternoon's speaker. Okay, actually our speaker needs a further introduction because he is quite known in the PMAP community. Uh, he has an extensive exposure in the field of HRM for almost 30 years. He has an MBA from the Ateneo Graduate School of Business and a BSBA management uh, Magna Cum Laude graduate from Aquinas University. His previous work includes being an HR and admin manager for Fuji Reynolds Fabrication Corporation, Home Cable Inc., and Unit Data and OB Roy Construction Inc. Aside from that, he used to be the corporate HR head of the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Also, he led the, uh, the Philippine Society of Training Development of PSDD as the president in 2011. And in 2020, he became PSDD's chairperson. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all give a warm round of virtual applause to, the, to our 2016 PIMA president, Mr. Jess Francis Agustillo, FPM. Good afternoon, Sir Jess. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. And I would I would yes. appreciate if everybody can open the screen because the most difficult part of somebody imparting knowledge or teaching or training or speaking is if you don't see your audience. I am used to be in a face-to-face -face event and this time I am talking to a screen. So a lot. Can you open your cameras for our... Okay, it would be nice. There are only 47 here, and it's what nice that we, if we can see each other. Yes. Somebody's talking SVP Obet. You're saying something? Yes, let's have a photo up uh, to perk up everyone, open up their camera. Okay, I'll stop sharing first. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Let's have a photo up. So I, can open the yes, I can see it. I can see it. Ang mga makeup, ang ating mga hairstyle habang uh, bagong suklay pa. Let's open our cameras, guys. And uh, we're going to have a uh, photo opportunity. Well, uh, most of our candidates are already here. And that would be a uh, 
to have them in the same screen. Um, would we take, okay, I'll be taking the lead. Let's put this in on gallery screen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so half of the attendees are, are currently uh, uh, not yet. Actually, that's the problem of HR that we we always would like to have engagement. So we have to open our screens. Let me allow. Okay, so now I'm on my gallery screen. So half of you are right here. I can see a PP Jerry Planner waving. Hello, PP Jerry. Nice to see you here. How about the others? Can we have your cameras turned on just for this uh, moment? I I'm sure some of you are trying, still trying to uh, turn on the videos because sometimes technology can still be a, a hassle. <laughs> yes, I, I got a private message that you cannot turn on his video because of some technical glitch. No worries on that. Okay, so five more seconds before we could finally uh, have that photo opportunity. Okay, five, four, three, to last call. Okay, I think this is good enough. At least uh, more than half of the attendees are already on screen. I'll, I'll be counting. Three, two, one. Give me your biggest smile for this shot. All right. Let me save it first. How about a wacky shot? All right. Wacky. <laughs> Pwede ba mag-jump shot? Pwede rin. Yung signature, ano mo, post mo, PTO. If you do jump shot, make sure you're not wearing boxers or undies, okay? Of course. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Smile, everyone. Walk a shot. All right, I got it. Okay, back to you, PPJS. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And I, I hope that uh, you can continue opening your screen so that I can see you. Okay, um, what was um, uh, announced, it's about strategic planning. Actually, strategic planning, you cannot discuss it in less than an hour. So it will just be the role of HR in strategic planning and a little of strategic planning planning 101. I know my, my partner in my live streaming is here, uh, Jerry Plana, and I know that <laughs> this is an elementary presentation on the role of HR and strategic plan, but you know, it's actually a request. And I did it yesterday for the election of the chapter representatives in the, in the board. And then it was actually a request that this is the time that we have our strategic plans, preparing for strategic plans. And of course, the likes of Beth Naso, the likes of Ellen Folido, and you, you facilitate it. But I, the, the one who told me around 80% of those in PMAP actually, it's not that we're trying to discriminate or say something negative. They actually join and are participating in strategic plans, but they are not actually uh, part of it. Just a participant, but not actually the lead in doing so. So if you are one of those, now you are requested to, to facilitate or lead, I think it's nice that you have to listen to this 40, minutes presentation on the role of HR in the strategic plan. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I am in Quezon City. I'm, I, I, I came from Bicol because we, I buried my mom a week, two weeks ago, and I, I am now in my niece, who is, an, who is a lawyer in Quezon City. I'm not in Paranaque. So if you notice that I am not so comfortable with this new room that I am in, but for the love of PMAP and for the love of the ELACOM, I am doing this. Yun na nga ang sinasabi ko, nakakatuwa when you are already a past president. Yung just 
Chibi. <laughs> Frank Ak na lang. Frank Ak for, for the major event. But I'm doing this for you. Okay, so we start with aligning HR function with a strategic plan. Planning actually, the strategic plan helps organization what it needs to do to achieve its goals and how it should be done. So aligning the HR functions with the strategic plan, make sure that the full potential of the organization, human resource, the our employees is actually realized. The HR strategy is driven by the vision, mission, statements, and values. So all your activities, all your programs, I got this from PP Jerry. Actually, it's anchored on your strategic plan. So understand the industry and the business environment. That's the, the, the next thing that we have to do to align the HR function. I had this when I was with Inquirer, when I was with Reynolds, you know, I, I was so busy. I was talking, it's just like the Mary and Martha thing in the Bible. I was so engrossed in what I do that I have some lapses and flows that I didn't understand the industry that we're in. I found out that when I was with Inquirer, we're not even a publication. Bulletin and Star is not actually our competitors, not even ABS. Our competitor is actually the one that is uh, getting the share of the people reading. And up to now, I'm very sure they're doing that in Inquiry. So understand the industry that you are in. You may be thinking that is you are in merchandising, but they think depends on the service and the product that you do. You might be in a different. So you do you need that in the scanning because you might be scanning your environment later on, but it's not actually your mundo. So use knowledge of the organization and the other functions to fulfill HR functional mission. That's the next thing that we have to align. We have to know what marketing is doing, what finance is actually doing, what sales is doing, what the supply chain is doing. So gonna the days that the HR will say you have silos and you, you don't care as long as I recruit and I do the proper exit. No. Remember that we did the new trend of HR is HRBP. And the worst is if the people actually assigned to that have no knowledge about the organization and the other functions. Gain a working knowledge on the roles and processes of the functional areas. So which is why I remember when I was still in a puppet world, I really asked my, my team to move around and to know what they're doing because there are people, they're the, the ones doing the process, there are people and they are actually, we take care of people. I remember in 2016, when I was president, we invited Dave Ulrich, and Dave Ulrich told us that half of our time in the office should be moving around to gain knowledge of the processes of other functional areas. Then offer insightful suggestions and feedback supported by facts and objective data. Remember that the Capno Trego in identifying problems, we don't even have to identify problems anymore. We start with creative thinking, then we go to critical thinking and system. If you need to develop something, design thinking, then strategic thinking and systems thinking. So how can you offer uh, any, any valuable or relevant suggestion to the functional areas, the business units, if you don't actually understand the industry and down to the, what the functional areas are doing? So having greater interaction. So HR now, let us now discuss it. So HR as a strategic partner after aligning, having greater interaction with the organization. So you have to move around. You are, you, and then the next one, the one in pink is actually, you must be part of the executive team that develops the business strategy. That is what I mentioned earlier. It's a little bit sad because sometimes we organize, we organize the, strategic planning sessions, uh, the, the, the caterer, the food, uh, where they're going to be, if that's face to face in this time, if it is uh, on a virtual mode, but uh, you're, you're a participant. No, we, we, we must be the lead. Remember in the Baldrige's measure, it has of, 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 uh, of an organization, it, people, and then we have, uh, markets, operations, and finance. Usually it's the other way around. It, 
because you have been there for the longest time, they sell you just after the resources or after the budget. And sometimes you, you forget the, 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 the people, the human resource that are actually the, the lead. So, and then the other one is, as a strategic partner, you have to act as the organization architect, which is why we own, we are the owners of the structure. When say the, the organization structure, the functional, the, the position, and then uh, so on and so forth. And then of course, when you have some change management, we have to, to act as the organization actor, advising on the current status of the human resources and how this can be used to support the strategic goals. Mind you, last year, a lot of us were really jumping and redundating everybody. Now the problem is how we have to get them back because as the architect of our organization, that is actually uh, a, role, a role as a strategic partner. So this time I know a lot of organizations are looking some of, <laughs> a lot of my friends are really asking me to help them look for people. And I was asking what happened because we let them go. Remember, I, I used also to have a webinar on the great attrition or the great resignation. It was compounded by that, the thing that we did because everybody for business continuity, everybody was actively going down. So we decided to let people go. And this time that is our problem. So HR is a strategic partner, highlighting the importance of the HR tasks and functions, and how it contributes to organization capabilities. That's the other side of the coin, that we have to influence, convince, and of course, let people know of what we are doing. That, and that is strategic. What is the essence or what is the reason behind the online masses or the, or the, the Zoom meetings or, or, the, or the activities that you do? Is that is strategic? So you have to tell them that it is not just HR for HR, but it is HR for the growth of the organization. You act as the advocate for people issues by explaining how this contribute to organization's core capabilities. A lot, I know a lot because I'm moving around. A lot of organization here down south of Manila, there are times there is the universal opposition between the workers and management and HR, because HR failed to convince that what HR actually is doing is a strategic from acquisition down to the exit or even that one of performance management or the increase. That the point is we have been doing a lot of things as we would like to do, but not actually letting people know that what we are doing is actually strategic. So seek the opportunity and validate its contribution. I did that when I was in Inquirer, actually moving around and trying to do conversation and telling them that, that, that this is what we're going to do because this is what we want to happen. Especially if you're doing OD from point A to point B, you have to tell them, I remember I have to go to LGM, if she rest in peace, and convince her that we need to have these costumes, we need to have this rigodon, because we need to have some engagement. And then you have to tell it so that people, remember I was in an organization, but people were actually always asking reasons why. So, I, 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 what I did was actually convince them that what we were doing from the, from the surveys that we did to the activities that I, 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 I was one of the first to, to do event, uh, events uh, HR, uh, events-based HR. Every twice a month, there is an event so people can look up, well, wait for it and look up to it. But we have to convince why we're doing it. And of course, you know why you are going to do it because there is, it is a strategic. There is a purpose for that and aligned to the vision and mission of, of your organization. And the one in yellow is very important. It should ensure that the HR team is competent. As a strategic partner, this is the other side of the coin. As managers or us in HR must make sure rescale, upscale, um, uh, upgrade yourself. The one that I mentioned earlier, try to know the industry, try to know the function, and you must be 
what they call competency, attitude, skills, and knowledge. A lot of HR have the knowledge, but mm, a little bit of improvement on the attitude. Okay, so let's now start with the strategic roles. I have around six slides on this. So I have skills to make the functional strategies and action plans realize employee potential and efforts in meeting the organization's goal. So have the skill, a post, to make the functional strategies and action plans realize employee potential. So it is one thing it, it um, I am not trying to, it's one thing that we should really know because I experienced that before. Then the other one is contribute to the decisions that build on employee strength, employee strength to meet corporate goals. Oh, this is now your training, this is your development, this is now your, your um, um, leadership development. Then the other one is responsible for devising recruitment and retention plans. Of course, it's a part of our uh, a plan. And then of course, motivate employees and provide opportunities to continuous development. So this is the first slide for our strategic more. Develop performance management system and strategic advantage to the organization. What I learned from T.P. Jerry, you know, he's a, some, he's a, a mentor. He, he told me, that nowadays it's more on the conversation, more on how you're going to improve, sort of a Kaizen. It's not, a, we should not focus on the incentives, neither on the evaluation form. It's more on trying to improve, having conversation to improve the performance of our human resource. And that again, a role and it has to be aligned to the strategic plan. Develop performance management system as a strategic advantage to the organization. This is actually what makes your organization different. Then lead and participate in change management. We need that. If what we've been doing three years of pre-pandemic, you really have to review it and make sure you change everything in your documents, in your handbooks, in what you do, in your processes, because it has already changed. Such as re-engineering and restructuring programs. I remember I am following one group chat here in PMAP. There was an exchange and I can still remember uh, PP Michelle Cordero Garcia mentioning that she is very much busy on the um, Workforce plan. I, I have, a, I have a, an image on that that I grabbed from in the internet. That, that is what we have to do, the change management. Who will be in the work on site? Who will be on the work from home or the work on anywhere? It, we will not, we should not ever, uh, what do you call this, propose that everybody should go back. And it's not even the trend, but it is actually the practice that HR, finance, and all support, those that can bring your work to your home should be working from home. And that acts actually a change management because a lot of people are opposed to that. And usually these are the, the leadership. Alert possible risks to the organization and taking steps to mitigate their impact. We are still in the pandemic. So that is our strategic role. So the, the nitty gritty of who will accompany our, our, our employees while they are being vaccinated and now, now again for the booster. So the possible risk of the organization, are you going to put uh, plastic separators or whatever? So we have to be alert on that. Audit and discover areas that are not in compliance and are exposed to risk. Oh, so this is what I mentioned earlier. I just grabbed it from the internet and look. The talent strategy is actually taken from the business strategy. And you can see on your, on your left, what are the things? It's very clear from the vision, the organization structure, the, organiz the OD job analysis, and then if you read first under select talent, the pro employment testing, the mobilized talent, so all the things that we do, it's actually connected from or study. I have another one. Uh, this one, 
Uh, just to show you an example of the strategic business plan and you have your vision in the core, and then you do your gap analysis. I will even have your vulnerabilities analysis and then your strategic plans. Okay. So con to continue the HR strategic role, take full responsibility for the alignment of employee skill and competencies with the strategic plan. And that is actually one of our critical and challenging role because we are responsible to align our employee skills. So uh, are you going to have, say, is a business writing? Are you going to have, say, a, a team building? Have a thought on that. Is that aligned to your mission, to your goals, to your, to your, to your values? Bring ideas for innovations and new product development. And a lot of people will ask, why, why are we supposed to be in this type of, of, of situation? Yes, you are as an HR because the people are actually the one doing it. I, I, I know a lot of organizations, they have HRIS, but they're not using it because they're afraid to use it because it may replace them. So bring ideas of innovation and new product development. I know of an organization that I am, I did training there. They have a CRM, a customer relations management system, an application, a system. Are they using it? No, because uh, there are, there is a group of, of clerks who are actually doing the, the what they call this, the manual. So you have to bring ideas of innovation and new products because you have to remember a lot of other business units might be acquiring or buying new systems and processes, but actually the people doing it are not ready. So prove its understanding to modern HRM trends for competitive adults. This is not uh, this ours. HR cannot be a passive function in the organization. Then monitor the market for new trends develop new approaches, and it has to innovate in traditional approaches. Remember that, that, that uh, the man, what I mentioned earlier, that you must have, you must give relevant and uh, valuable suggestion. You must be able to market for new trends. Okay, so still on the Easter, all determine the art of connecting the strategic plan with the real business. Unless you have a, a unit where it's in charge of the corporate affairs, but if none, it's actually the HR is actually uh, expected to do this. Understand the strategic directions and translate them into the right initiative and steps. So where, where? Say in your mentoring, in your coaching, or even in, your, in the activities that you do, you have to know if, if, if what you're doing is actually aligned to the strategic direction and get buy-in from top management. That is the most important for the initiatives that are not clearly described in the strategic plan. And you have actually to represent all the other business units if actually the board or management are not appreciative of some changes. And you have to tell them that it, 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 it is your role because people are actually involved. You design innovative approaches which help to reach the current imperatives from the strategic plan. So after you have to be part of crafting the strategic plan and after that you have to discern and try to see how you're going to translate and then influence people to do it. Oh, this is just a, an image to remind us of the strategic human resource management. Remember that you have to start from value proposition to your workforce planning. That one that I mentioned on PP Michelle Cordero, wherein you have to look into your WOS, WOF, WFA. Then the recruitment and selection. Remember recruitment and selection is just not recruitment. I, I teach this in our, in our diploma course. Acquisition is actually more on your employee brand and your, 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 your proposition, your value proposition. I also got this from PP Jerry. Sometimes you miss that in the recruitment. It's not the nitty gritty that you just try to publish and then collect and collate uh, resumes. No, you have to, to look into how you are projecting your organization 
to the community and to the passive applicants. Then, of course, your training, then performance management, and their feedbacking and the total rewards. I remember the 360 degree feedback. If you are updated with McKenzie's, McKenzie's uh, survey, there, I think it's number two, number three, it's actually the real time feedbacking. I remember that because it, during the during the wake of my mom, everybody was telling them that my mom will give suggestions, will try to criticize, be a critic on whoever. And I remember that uh, the McKinsey survey on real time feedbacking. The feedbacking should not be after after it has been done. Just imagine if your feedback is after a year, it's not relevant anymore. So the feedback is on real time. And I think almost all BPOs are doing that. So it's strategic human resource, that feedbacking should also be strategic. Then of course, your total rewards, who should be rewarded? Those working from home or those working on site? And you have to be strategic in doing so. Then of course your succession plan, because actually that will be our problem later on, because even here in the Philippines, we're already experiencing the great attrition. Then of course, how we are going to retain our valued customer. I know this, this is not a something that is to be taken uh, lightly. Then of course, your HR audits, try to review and audit what you are doing. A lot of us have this, this traditional mindset that we are already uh, perfect in doing so, so we don't want to change it. And so that is not actually having a creative mindset. So continue the strategic role, demonstrate to overcome obstacles, stay on the way and implement initiatives that are right for the future of the company. So that is part of our role. So hindi ka dapat matinag, hindi ka dapat, just imagine you're the first one to be having mental health issue, or you're the first one to oppose, you're not embracing change. Then there is somebody trying to come up with an idea. The, 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 the mere fact that you're closing your screens, you are not up to be embracing change. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> overcome the obstacle. To overcome the obstacle, we are using Zoom. We are trying to converse to each other. Open your screens. I am doing that when I do that in Echo in, in Pino. Okay. So they overcome the obstacles, stay on the way, and implement initiatives that are right for the future. Build the strategic alliances with other employees. And that is the point. And you know, uh, I also get this in our conversation with PP Jerry is that uh, strategic planning is not just there with the uh, tower, tower ivories. No, everybody should actually just to be cascaded. It has to be considered that everybody should be involved and then you have to get their, uh, their contribution on how to post the solutions forward. And then of course the communication plan. Actually, a lot of strategic planning, uh, it, it is not successful because what is actually missed is how you're going to communicate, how you're going to translate from the goals to the objectives of the department, to the setting if you're using Mercer, pay for person, pay, pay for position, and pay for uh, uh, position, person, and performance, then it has to be properly communicated. I had experienced this challenge. If you would like to know it, call me and I will tell you that it's very important that you need to communicate strategic uh, directions for, for to, 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 your, to your employees. And they may be active in the strategic plan development. So you have to break your silence. The role of HR is, is the right translation sticking to the implementation of the plan. No one will translate directions for HR, but HR will be evaluated against directions, not the initiatives. So they will be thinking, oh, what are you doing? Is that actually helpful or contributing to the growth of the organization? So you have to be ready and make sure, discern that what we are doing is actually aligned to that. And you know why you're doing it because you have a, a, a strategic uh, uh, reason for that. 
HR cannot follow the HR practices. It has to set the best practices for the industry, which I did when I was in inquiry. Traditional HR has no value added. Such HR function is not invited to the process of the strategic plan. So the HR manager, I just got this, grabbed this from the internet. The HR manager, the strategic role is the HR strategy execution. And, and of course, I will, I will really insist that aside from the organization strategic plan, the HR must also have its own HR strategic plan. Then the relationship management, how you're going actually to come up with a ways and programs and activities that relationships are really improved and developed. And then of course, performance management, because we own, we own productivity, because we are the one in charge of um, following up the performance of the company. And if you look at it, that is our contribution because in everyone's organization mission, it's actually the accomplishment of something, even the ROI. So the performance is actually very important and we are actually on it. Then of course, the team development, not just the going to the beds or the basketball. No, it's actually building the team. And uh, building the team, if you notice it, uh, team is, team work in this is not actually being used now. The, 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 the S, uh, what do you call this? The C's, uh, communication, uh, collaboration, cooperation, uh, coordination, and synergy. Oh, that is not a C, that's an S. <laughs> but you know, if you notice it, everybody's already mentioning collaboration, trying to really appreciate it's one of us, one another. Then we have the organization design, and this is actually one thing that is a challenge to all of us in HR. And we need really to be, uh, we really need to focus on this. Kung hindi natin alam, take some courses here in Pima on our request, kasi mahirap, mahirap. Even myself, I am actually on it. Nandiyan si Pipi Bong, uh, Ostero, and marami dito si Pipi, uh, um, Jerry Plana are actually exponents on organization uh, design. And then, of course, employee satisfaction. Oh, what I was mentioning, plan is not organization, uh, yeah, 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 organization development, important. Then we have the employee satisfaction, succession so planning, and HR, and um, being an HR champion, taking care of people. So, uh, this is just an example how we need to be strategic in our. That is, you know, in what we do every day. Look at the strategies, it's actually coming from the business strategy and the human resource strategy. And then how, what are the components? We identify and that is recruitment, selection, talent review, succession, we assess that is performance management leadership of them. We develop that is career planning, talent movement, and so on and so forth, and we retain. So all of these that we do, try to take a picture, it has to be strategic. It has to be aligned. It has to be aligned. To what? To the business strategy. So this is another example. I use this uh, image in, in, my, in the diploma courses, especially on HR planning. We need to have that now because we are moving, pivoting, and considering the VUCA world, we need to come up with some planning on our human resources. So it involves three basic questions. Where is the organization now? And I'm talking of HR planning, our strategic planning. Where does it want to go from here? And how will we get there? Even I, I know JP Orbeta and I know Mr. Nicklin are actually doing perfect in their strategic planning. And they have good facilitators in, in inquiry, they are doing it. But you know, these basic questions are always have to be taken. Where is the organization now? Where it wants to go from here? And how will it get there? So these are actually the basic steps. And HR must be able to know that. Know that. Of course, we get facilitators to do it. And sometimes we're not even the one in charge of it. But I mentioned earlier, we must take the lead. 
lead in coming up with this? So the first one is a strategic formulation or the organization vision and mission statements. And they will tell me, sir, yes, mayroon na kami no. At this time, you have to review it. The pandemic happened. And there are some things that we need to really improve. Gone are the days that we really claim that you want to be the lead, to be the number one. You have to consider and then scan if you really can do it. Just imagine you would like to be the lead marketing, but you are just uh, covering Luzon. How can you be the lead in the country when you are just covering Luzon? So you have to be realistic in your vision and mission statements. Then, of course, after that, we have the strategic strategy development, the thorough analysis of factors. This is where you use, I have two slides in that, the scanning for your uh, SWOT and your SLEP, and then the strategy implementation. This is actually what is being done during strategic planning session. And sometimes you are so focused on it that we miss the first two. So this is actually where in your given uh, a form and you try to fill it up, the short-term goals, the action plans, the resources allocated. And after that, what next? We try to cascade it to our people. No, you have to really look into how it is aligned from the formulated strategies down to how you're going to implement it. And what is actually sometimes being missed is the strategy evaluation, the assessment of strategies and performance needed to the achievement of the goals. And usually we do this after six months, the media review, but who should be in charge of that? Which is why sometimes I like that we now have that thought, that, that concept, that HR concept of HR BP. So in the strategy formulation, you are pre-planning activities. You decide who will be the participants, the time frame. You know, in Inquirer, as early as June, we already have to prepare. We invite people to give us insights on what is happening in the industry. So, and then the methods of collecting and analyzing the data for the plan. So strategic planning is not just on the time that you are doing the plans, you are giving the forms and trying to fill that up. It has to have a time frame. It is a continuous uh, process. It is a year long process. There are developed organization vision and mission statements to key strategic planning activities as the stage. I suggest that you really have to review it. Last year, I was chairman of uh, the PSTD, I'd like to mention it, and previous to that, uh, family contact and I had a, a strategic planning in, in Tagaytay and we really did uh, something about the, the organization vision from a kilometric vision into just keywords. And then that is actually something that is doable and can be appreciated by everybody. Then scanning and analyzing the environment is conducted, long-term goals are established. So this is now the strategic development after your strategic formulation. So you're, you scan for the, the environment, for the long-term objectives of so specific measurable, of course, it's smart. And of course, to provide direction how to achieve it. So just a quick review on the SWOT, the strength and weaknesses is actually ours. And usually I would like to mention that this is not the time to brag. Usually in the planning session, you come up with, we did a number of days, we were able to sell this, no, put that in another, another event and we're in you try to raise what you have accomplished. In the SWOT, you have to really be honest and then the one who is going to take the lead because you do a lot of your surveys and your performance uh, evaluation is HR on the strength and the vulnerabilities of the company, of the organization. Then of course, opportunities is that this is more on marketing and all the other business unit, but still, HR should be involved, especially if you are challenged with the human resource. So it helps the organization take advantage of the external opportunities by leveraging its internal strengths. Then we have the slot. Why is it that I'm mentioning this? We need it now because there are a lot of interventions or what they call this, we are affected by the social, legal, economic, political, and technological factors. I know a lot, I, I, I was, uh, I was engaged by Salarium. Uh, I just hope they're back to come up with a survey pre-pandemic and even during the pandemic. And then we found that with the technological factors, I am not pulling your leg 
only around 20%. It's actually 18%. It was actually technologically savvy. So around 80% of a lot of them are PIMA are not actually ready for technology. So you have to look into that. And of course, political. The election will be coming next year and uh, uh, our organizations are leaving, companies are leaving the, uh, the Philippines and you have to look into that. And of course, the economy. economy. So after that, the fourth one, the third one is the strategy implementation. And the one in yellow, short-term goals are set. That is actually the one that is being done by the business unit. Then you try to cascade it to the action plan. And then, you know why I'm mentioning this? Because if you're using the Mercer three Ps for uh, performance management, you need to have objective settings. And this is the action plan. And even after that, from the objective setting, you need to have to-dos. This is actually that one of Watson. So from the goals to the action plan. So it has to be, and then who's the one minding it, following it, monitoring it? HR. HR. So we have to be actually be, uh, be knowledgeable on this. So the resources are allocated. Look at this. The budget is actually after the strategic implementation. And of course, your communication, how you are going to motivate people that what they're actually doing may malasake to the company. May malasake to the company. So the long-term organization goals are further broken into tactical goals. Adopt a participatory approach in defining tactical goals by ensuring participation of a larger employee base. I remember this in inquiry, that was actually a challenge in how to convince people to really uh, be participative in coming up with their objective settings. I remember that I used to handle uh, marketing and sales in Inquirer, and that is actually setting up quota, coming up what uh, their, their goals is actually a challenge. And I'm, I'm very sure right now it's also a challenge. And you don't have to can just dictate it because you're not the one in the, in the field. So it has to be participatory. So the action plan and resource allocation comes next. So the business level goals are broken into steps and then employees, teams, department, and business units. Okay. So the last one is actually strategy evaluation, reviewing existing strategies periodically, measuring performance, and taking corrective actions needed to ensure the achievement of the organization. And who is the one doing this? Of course, you do it in your, in your review, but who is the one actually documenting it and trying to know what are the, what are the improvements that happen. So the goal of strategy is to see if strategies are helping the organization achieve its goals. So the, so why is it that I mentioned it? Ah, involved in involvement in HR because of the metrics. And we call this our KPIs. The performance metrics may include financial indicators, revenue, market share, costs. Well, this is actually for the business units, but the customer satisfaction, customer loyalty, defection, customer complaints. So if you go to the nitty gritty, you really have to look into your JDs. Are, you, are your job descriptions actually, do they mention competencies? Do they mention the KRA? And do they have KPIs? And then the KPIs has to be aligned with what is mentioned here in the slide. And that is the strategy evaluation. Or else you are just trying to come up with figures that is not actually contributing to the mission of the company. With this, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot really discuss strategic planning because it will involve around a day. I would like to say thank you. I hope I made a event. If you would like to have some questions, if you have time, but if not, you can just my email address and my number is there, or you can just other past presidents of uh, PIMA. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. I, I hope I, I made a dent as a front act of this <laughs> Beth Maya Kusayo, because I know you're doing this. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, past president Jester Bustillo, for that uh, sort of a uh, refresher to some, but definitely uh, quite a uh, interesting presentation on strategic planning. 
right? It's actually on our rolls. Okay. We can have one or two, okay, because we are ahead, Richard. One or two questions so that we can have some engagement. Uh, if I cannot answer, then some of, so I will ask somebody to answer it. <laughs> Yeah, familiar tayo, familiar tayo, and we need to have it. And we need to so take if them. Anyone in. from our attendees who have uh, a question? Uh, or you share what you're doing now. Malay mo, kasi I, I, I was able, I deleted that, that portion of what are the trends in HR, uh, in a strategic plan. And dami kayang trends ngayon, and you use technology. Okay, uh, we have uh, somebody who is, actually it's uh, Ms. Ambet Nasol. Uh, yes, so, can we put the spotlight to No, no, no. I, I just wanted to ask experience. No? Kasi, diba, we also have different challenges. So, you, what was the most difficult uh, HR strategic when you go into this strategic planning? What's the most difficult, Jesse? I remember pre-pandemic pa ito, I was in an association, in an organization, what's an actually challenge? That's inquirer. Kasi it's not even the competitor yung aming problema. The competitor is actually the technology. Yes. Technology. So, so if you, for, to answer that question, it's actually, you have to be aware. You have to be updated of what is happening. So, yung scanning, para bang nobody, di ba, we even ask, and I remember ko si, si Ms. Tita Puanko, we had one as a facilitator, and dami kaming facilitator. You don't really have to wait for others to tell you what is really happening in the environment, and that is the biggest challenge. HR, ang mahirap dito, Beth, kasi HR, we're so engrossed in what we do. So sometimes you forget, may sadly tayong mundo eh. So we forget the other, the world. So we for, even forget the industry that we are in. So dapat ito, talagang medyo, ano ka, marites ka talaga. Marites. You really have to <laughs> stand the com- on your own. On your own. Kasi ganito yung Beth. Say, uh, there is that person that your marketing person or your finance person trying to come up with some deep strategies. Dapat yung HR, may room may sabi, may sabi. Yun lang ang problema natin. That's the greatest challenge. Diba? Just imagine that everybody was mentioning the, at the time, uh, Beth, on the technology. Just ko, nawawala kaya ako, Beth. So, you know, this is actually, uh, ay, nandiyan si Pipi Jerry. Pipi Jerry, uh, help me here. Ayan, Pero ayan, ito, help. Ha, mahirap talaga yung digitalization. Yeah, mahirap. Yes, yes. I want to I wanna add something to that no? because we both belong to the media industry. I think yes. it's far more difficult with the publication. Uh, kasi we thrive on technology also. Mm-hmm. However, more than 10 years ago, I, I, I think you need to have good leadership here. It, it, it takes a lot of foresight to, to determine okay. the course of action that you would take. No? So becoming strategic is also having that vision. You know that technology is you know, invading the world and we're into terrestrial broadcasting. So meaning today it's it's traditional broadcasting. And therefore, if you infuse technology, we will all die. That's the that's the <laughs> that's the thing there. <laughs> Together, it, it, it's it's really a challenge. No? However, um I think I we Siguro were fortunate that we had we have very good leaders in the organization, visionaries. So more than 10 years ago, we've already started embracing technology and integrating them into our, uh, our operation. So parang you, you're now a crossbreed between a terrestrial, traditional media becoming now a multimedia organization using all platforms. So meaning from the traditional... Yeah, and, and the role of HR there was kind of important yes. because, because of the kind of training and development that we have to 
provide our our employees kasi you just don't embrace technology you have to prepare your organization for it and the way to prepare your organization is not just to acquire the technology but to prepare the people who would use the technology right so, so you have to really spend a lot of time and resources training your people especially our marketing people who are used to the traditional way of marketing and selling you have to make them technically adept <laughs> and make them <laughs> even the use of facebook you, you have to teach them how to use the ipad the laptop the cell phones so, hindi ako nagbibiro it was kind of difficult <laughs> oh because these are the the best sales people that you have but they're not tech savvy we have to teach them para ano to burda 323 <laughs> diba <laughs> you have to start from scratch and and really hr has to play a big role in in developing people not just to embrace tech, technology or any system for them to learn and have to be guided in in you know using the technology properly yes 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 yeah yun yun ang gusto ko in a bit i want to address beth's question which i think is a very sure sure sure, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. the question of beth here is what mm -hmm. uh, challenge have uh, we experienced yes. in the area of doing strat planning and one of my own personal experience and i think this is something that sometimes we ignore no? is sometimes when we go through strategic planning the output of strategic planning is a lot of innovation really of course a lot of things differently mm -hmm. and that's the reason why when we come out of strategic planning sessions and then we do our tactical planning mm -hmm. and the tactical plans are based on existing businesses mm -hmm. because yeah. that's what we're used to doing so there's a disconnect mm -hmm. because organizations are not really built to change they're built to do the same things over and over again they're built for scaling no mm -hmm. so uh, this is where we need to to have the challenge of how does what we produce on the strategic level really become mainstream as far as the business operations is concerned and i think that's that's a real challenge because efficiency and innovation do not always go together well as a matter of fact they go against each other no and strategic planning is precisely about innovation and new ideas especially during the pandemic so mm. again challenge for for hr leading that process jerry i i think it's a no no kaya may infusion of culture no kasi it has to be driven by culture behavior no para to make it work right i just want to add a little i i i'm very proud of jesse for doing very scholarly presentation of the subject Pero ito lang ang akin, no? uh, probably this is something we can think about. I think the basis of both strategy development and culture development is the same. And that's going to be purpose, vision, and values. Mm -hmm. I think whether that's the basis of strategy development and that's the basis of culture development or culture building. Mm -hmm. So I think we really need to do a good job at that level. I, I remember Jesse saying what they did in in PSTD, you know, talagang I don't think a lot of us are really doing a good job still on the vision, purpose, and values level and the way they should talk to each other. Sometimes we do this very independently, you know, parang in, not integrated. If we can do that well, that can become a good basis for strategy development and culture building at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. John, so something that is wonderful for this afternoon. Uh, Richard, are we still, you know, do we still have the time? Or are we now going to continue to the next portion? Thank you, uh, Beth, and thank you, Ellen and Jerry, for uh, this wonderful conversation. Yes. Do we, do, do we still have time for one more, you know, 
I comment think, or sharing? That uh, some direct messages, but this is inquiring about how to get a copy of your presentation. Of course, we're going to share it through you, through you, through you. Oh, so saman din to to tawagan niyo ako pag conversation. No kami ni na Jerry, kami ni na Beth, ni ano ni na Ellen. We have to share each other because you know, ah, yung yung role natin in the in the organization. It's not even a parabang competitive tayo we have to be felt no it's actually it's actually ano talaga yung yung you know, discretion natin yun it kaila eh. it's actually incumbent on our part now we have to be strategic wow yeah. ang yeah. term ko niyan medyo malalim lalim eh. ano best ah wow to us para bang it's actually a sabi it's, it's a challenge it's actually something sad if the, the each person is not strategic so even your makeup even your dress that little thing it has to be strategic it has the, the when you go to the office what will be your first statement how you're going to end the day that has to be strategic so that is strategic mindset but that, what what we're just doing now is how we are going i, I really love what jerry told us now culture and also trying to uh, that the paradox of trying to meet the, the innovation thing and then trying to do some change management because what we are doing is actually based on what we know. Yeah, I mentioned it. So nice, nice that you appreciate. Hello, Gorgeous. Ako kasi, yes, when you is. say you're strategic, especially in HR, you're the go-to department. Meaning ah, to ah. say, it in the in the whole gamut of the operations of your organization, you're there. You're here, there, and everywhere. That's being strategic. Because yeah. you're being consulted, your advice is sought all the time. Mm -hmm. Whenever, whenever the functional groups are coming up with plans and projects, you have a say. That's being strategic, meaning to say, merong kang merong kang papel na mahalaga in the organization. Hindi ka lang department. Hindi ka lang taga process ng time ng ng time records or ng benefits, but in major decisions. You are there, and you're being consulted. Your advice is very important, and are is very important in coming up with sound plans and programs for the organization. You really have to be on the field. You're in the shop floor. And then I would like to mention this, Ellen. Thank you for all the tickets that you're giving me. The time that there was. Tiket talaga. Hello, Mrs. Ellen. I simply the one assigned in. Loneta, kasi nahanap ko siya. And she's actually supervising the Liwan participants, how they're going. Just imagine HR doing that. So Ellen, alam mo, I can uh, hug kasi I know what you're telling us this afternoon. <laughs> o oh, sige pa, isa, isa pa kasi nag nababilis, may oras pa tayo. O oh, oh, sige mag-umpisa na tayo. I would like to listen to the presentations. Richard? Before we present this, our uh, candidates for 2022 position, uh, of course, we would like to uh, thank you, PPGS, for uh, the question. And uh, I think you deserve a, a round warm of virtual applause for that. Gusto naman. Mamahal ko yan kay Ellen at kay Beth at sa lahat. Okay, so... Uh, Maraming salamat, PPGS. PPGS. And I think uh, this is uh, our time to call on back uh, past president of the Policarpo to formally present the candidates for the 2022 PMAP officers and board of trustees, uh, PP uh, Obet. Thank you very much, Richard. So let's give again another virtual round of applause for PP Jesse. Ayan. So I'm so happy at uh, nakita kita naman tayo there for this afternoon. At uh, welcome to the part two of this gathering. So allow me to share a screen. So welcome to the 2021 Candidates Forum. And uh, in this afternoon session, let me share with you the timetable of the 2021 PMAP election. So today, we are now already at this portion wherein a while ago we had a learning session conducted by no less than by our very dear friend, PP Jesse Rebustillo on strategic HR. And in a little while, 
we will listen to the presentation of each candidate and we will be able to interact with them. No? And the uh, national election will be done virtually on December 29 to 31, right? based on the schedule. And there will be a release of the election results on January 7, 2022. Now for the manner of election, the Board of Trustees shall be composed of 12 members as follows. Four officers, as we know, the president, vice president, the secretary, and the treasurer. And there will be five trustees to be elected at large and three trustees to be chosen by the PIMAP chapters. We already did this activity yesterday morning. And the three trustees will be the chapter representatives who are the incumbent PIMAP chapter presidents. So there will be one trustee for the zone, for Visayas and Bindanao. On behalf of the 2021 ELECOM uh, members, let's give a round of applause to our dear friend, Attorney Pilar Nenuka Almira, 1996 PIMAP president, and also past president in 2016, Jesse Francis and the Bustillo. All right. So Richard, let us now introduce our Candidates. So for this afternoon, we will listen to the presentation of Miss Penny Bungato, Miss Lily Quintas, Miss Bebe Reyes, Miss Solchu, and Attorney John, John Zuniga. And PPO for the PPO Bet, yeah. if I may. Uh, with your permission, Miss sure, sure. Penny Bongato is still in Makati Med right now. Uh, she yes. just sent a, a message, uh, but she'll try to join uh, if she can still join, but uh, she's having a medical uh, procedure okay. or something. Thank you. No, Ted. So we will um, rearrange the order presentation. We will start with Ms. Lily Quintas to be followed by Ms. Pepe Reyes, Ms. Solchu, Attorney John Zuniga, and then for the treasurer post, Ms. Maricor Militante, for the secretary position, Ms. Virgie Mendoza, for the vice president, Ms. Beth Nasol, and lastly for the PIMA president, Ms. Ellen Folido. All right. So we can now start with Ms. Lily Quintas. Hello. For presentation. Let's give a round of applause to Ms. Lily Quintas. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fellow PMAPers. Uh, my name is Lily Quintas. I have been with PMAP for the longest time. I am probably one of those who have been with PMAP for quite a while. But I am also the newest to, to, to decide to become a part of the board of PMAP. So, ako yung youngest at yung oldest. <laughs> so, um, I have been a member of PMAP since 1984. And uh, I have been a member of the membership committee. Eh, pero sabi niya, may araw. Hindi niya lang sinabi sa iyo anong araw. Masa may alam siya. Well, hindi rin niya alam Okay. Um, and I have been a member of the membership committee since then, um, in and out, um, even in the 90s and in the 80s. And then, but I have been more steadily uh, been a member of the MEMCOM from 2013 up to the present time. And I have held the chair chairmanship of the committee from 2015 to 2020. And currently, I'm the chairperson for the Ways and Means Committee. I am also a member of the Society of Fellows as AFPM, and I have been certified as a Total Rewards Professional by the ASEAN um, Total Rewards Institute in Singapore. And uh, I am currently doing consultancy work for human resources, and I aid a lot of um, um, SMEs. That is that brings uh, that gives me the reason to, and that's why that's one of the reasons why. Um, bringing team up closer to the SMEs is uh, is one of my advocacies because doing this kind of consultancy work for these um, smaller companies has given me the realization that there really is is a need 
for us to do, to bring the human profession, the, the HR profession to the smaller companies because this is where we are most needed. Um, and also being in the senior and in the twilight years of our career, I think it is already part of my advocacy to, to, to um, transfer technology and develop the future leaders of, uh, of our profession, of the HR profession, because still, um, a lot of um, HR practitioners out there still need a lot of guidance, still need a lot of um, skilling up and education. And I think this is something that something which I want to leave, leave behind when I finally, um, when I can no longer, I, I plan to do HR work for as long as I can, no? but for uh, when, when the time comes when I need to relax, it's what I'd like to look back at, that I've been able to make a, that, that I was able to make a difference in the lives of the young people and the budding um, HR professionals. Thank you very much for listening and um, have a good afternoon for to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Lili Kintans. And let's give a round of applause to Ms. Deba Treya. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I did not prepare a slide uh because uh, gusto ko maging conversational na lang if elected as a trustee i would like to serve in the various programs of the chapters in coordination with the programs of the pmap national in order for the chapters to be active with the programs and activities with pmap national with my experience last uh, 2018 as the trustee in charge of the sun chapter and my experience also last 2019 and 2020 as trustee in charge of membership committee, I can help the chapters in their membership recruitment, membership retention, and membership engagement. I also had an experience as a trustee in charge of the Ways and Means Committee. I can also guide the chapters on how to generate funds with my experience last, I, the current year, this current year pala, because I'm the trustee in charge of the Ways and Means Committee. So with my experiences in the chapters, because I am the founding mem, I, I'm the founding president also of Pima Terlac chapter since, 20, since 2000, I can help the chapters in their activities because I'm a, I am also familiar with the activities of the things that uh, are going on in the chapters because uh, most of the problems in the chapters are membership recruitment and retention and also on how to generate funds so with my experiences with the pmap board since uh, 2018 up to the current year i can assist the chapters so i would like to serve as much as possible in the chapters because dun ako nagsimula Sa chapter when I organized the PMAP Terlac chapter in 2000. Then I can also introduce to the chapters the committees and programs of PMAP National because some of the chapter members do not know some of the uh, programs or the committees of PMAP National. So I would like to link all of the chapters with the PMAP National. So thank you very much also for giving this opportunity for me to be part of the board and uh, to be one of the candidates also for 2022 board. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Bebet, for that uh, conversation in terms of your plans and programs. And at this point, let us now acknowledge the next presenter, Ms. Sol Chu, Ms. Sol. P.P. Robert, baka si Ms. Sol lost her connectivity. Uh, 
Uh, o nga, mukha na wala siya. Mukha na wala siya. Baka we may uh, want to. Just um, go back na lang. Let us move on to Attorney John Zuniga. Attorney John? Ayan, thank you. Thank you. Uh, PPO Bet, good afternoon. Fellow good afternoon. Members. Uh, kaya po naman sabi ni Tito Abet, I'm, I'm John Zuniga. Ako po siguro ang isa sa huli o huling nag-file ng Certificate of Candidacy para sa darating na team of election. Uh, nag-file po ako noong extended deadline for filing. Hindi po dahil sa ayaw kong tumulong sa PMAP, ngunit dahil mas gusto ko sana na supuporta na lang sa mga nagtanais maglingkod bilang mga miyembro ng ating PMAP board. Uh, sa tingin ko naman po ay nakatulong na rin ako sa PMAP nung ako ay naging miyembro ng PMAP board noong 2011 to 2012, uh, 2014, 2017, 2018. At sumuporta sa mga programa ni na past presidents Bong Ostero, Tulok Florentine at uh, Attorney Josefo Simenez or Attorney JBJ. Naging miyembro na rin po ako ng board ng PMAP HRM Foundation noong 2013. Ako rin po ay dating chairperson at aktibong miyembro ng uh, Labor Policy and Reforms Committee ng PMAP at naglilingkod na rin sa PMAP sa pamamagitan ng kundiging uh, resource person, moderator, facilitator, cheerleader at kung anong mga kapasidad na makakatulong ako sa mga proyekto ng PMAP at ng LPRIR Committee. At uh, mas gusto ko rin sana na may mga bagong miyembro na maging mas aktibo sa PMAP upang isang tabi rin ang tingin ng ilan na ang liderato ng PMAP ay dinodomina ng mga datihan ng miyembro. Uh, however, close to the deadline for filing, uh, E.D. René Hener and Ms. Ellen Pulido spoke with me and relayed that there appears to be a reluctance by some potential candidates to join this year's board, perhaps because of the recent controversies involving the organization. And uh, PMAP has been very uh, close to my heart, and I thought that I should step up and contribute during this very critical time. So I am therefore offering myself as a potential member of the PMAP Board of Trustees. If you will allow me to serve you again, I intend to contribute in safeguarding PMAP stature as the premier authority in, in people management in the Philippines and in increasing PMAP's role in shaping national policies on people issues. So I am committed to, uh, one, maintain PMAP's close collaboration with various government agencies, especially the Department of Labor and Employment, to help members avail of services that these agencies may offer. Two, ensure that the collective voice of PMAP's members are heard in the creation of laws, policies, or programs that pertain to people issues. So this includes continued representation in the National uh, Tripartite Industrial Peace Council, as well as uh, involvement uh, or through uh, invitations from Congress as resource person. Three, uh, help strengthen the mechanisms for providing free legal assistance to members. And, and four, give members easier access to services that PMAP may offer, such as utilizing the PMAP West website as a venue where members may obtain uh, resource materials on labor laws. Uh, these are not new programs, and I am happy to say that I've been, I have previously contributed in implementing these during my previous terms as a member of the board. And in addition to this, I also undertake to support the plans and programs of uh, Ms. Ellen Polido. I am, am aligned with her trust to go back to basics and focus on certain key areas, such as financial viability, program continuity and enhancement, which jives with the plans that I discussed earlier. Uh, chapter engagement, something that I have also pursued by accepting invitations to speak at various chapter events, capability, capability building of MSMEs, and uh, technology advancement, which also aligned with my trust to give members easier access to PMAP services. So, huli man po ako lumahok sa darating ng PMAP election, sisikapin ko po na maging una sa pagsiservisyo sa PMAP kung papala rin na maging member ng PMAP board. Maraming salamat po. <laughs> Thank you very much, Attorney John Zuniga. So do we already have the connection of Ms. Sol Q? Ms. Sol? So if Ms. Sol is not yet around virtually, let's now proceed to the executive position. To start with, let's give a round of applause to Ms. Maricor Militante for the treasurer position. Okay, 
Sige. Uh, that's afternoon, everyone. So I have prepared a few um, sharing for this for the for our for this afternoon's forum. No? So can we have uh, the the slides, please? Thank you. So, okay, a wrong background. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, as brought, of course, to prayer and discernment, actually, I've been serving PMAP as your board of trustee since 2019. No? Uh, so, this will 2019, 2020, and 2021. Okay, so uh, it's been a very uh, grateful and uh, very challenging as well no, on a journey because in 2019 that was the time I was battling cancer okay fourth stage cancer no um, then I would be attending board meetings while on chemotherapy etc no but I was able to breeze through that one with God's graces and miracle so here I am right now um, offering again my service to all of you on my third life already no so because I was already uh, declared as cancer-free with God's graces and miracles. So, hindi pa tapos yung, yung aking mission, sabi nga nila, di ba? So, at this point, um, it's my um, gratefulness, no? Um, as brought to prayer and discernment, uh, as what I've said earlier, to offer my services this time as your board treasurer. Anchored on this theme of transformation for growth and sustainability. Which, of course, with this... Uh, five key action points no doing the active listening approach which i've been embracing since i was uh, doing the uh, the different functions i had i have even before being a board member um then going for the best normal to uplift and invigorate to heal strengthen and of course sustain you know? whatever we went through we also need to go through the healing especially of the membership strengthen and of course sustain you know, um, our trust our advocacy our mission and definitely part of the point there is collaboration and partnership so moving forward to the next piece so this are encapsulated in the following um, key deliverables or action points it's really first recreating and sustaining the culture of wellness, of well being at workplaces and professions, which is really anchored on the holistic facets of the human person, the spirit, mind, body, which is, of course, our relevant contribution to our country and the world. No? Being HR, the premier HR organization, we take care really of the people, and uh, that is really our mandate and our calling. We also ensure one of my uh, deliverables or objectives as well no is to ensure the sound management of finances continue the best practices now that we have already in pima uh, the finances and properties resources anchored on the principles definitely with emphasis on good governance integrity transparency and sustainability and um, the third part of course is enhance and strengthen our collaboration and partnership with the different international organizations national organizations no and of course the the government as well on workplace health safety and security policies programs and innovations especially facing and being ready for the post pandemic no the best normal that you would like to envision for our workplaces and for our pima definitely then moving forward to the next, please. We also continue to revisit and update our constitution and bylaws, no? As we respond to the call and demands and disruptions of these times. And really chart and gear towards the best normal and onwards to our true north aspirations. Anchored on healing reparation, strengthen, and sustain. Pima. Okay, so we know very well the challenges that we encountered, especially here in 2021. And um, we also would like to enjoin everyone 
in this endeavor no? on how we will be able to further collaborate and respond no, to the call and the demands um, and how the revisiting and updating of our PMAP constitution and bylaws will be more meaningful and will also serve as an instrument no, for healing, reparation, uh, strength, and sustainability as well. Then, of course, the third, uh, the another um, thrust, of course, is to embark on long-term and strategic organizational development, reassess our PMAP organization structure, systems, and processes, and well-being and competencies as well of our dear professional staff, as we aim to level up and sustain PMAP services and offerings for our members, as we inspire, we engage more volunteers. So we take care of the core, our professional staff no, in PMAP. And uh, of course, we also strategically respond to the needs of our members, live up to being the premier HR organization in the Philippines and the Asia Pacific region. And of course, the, 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 we go global as well. No? Um, we go macro, we go strategic beyond the tactical. So moving forward to the last um, slide that we have. Sustain, this one really sustains still the programs and initiatives that we started already, um, particularly the four Gs at the workplaces and professions, which is anchored really on gratefulness, generosity, giftedness, and God's presence and deepen, of course, and strengthen the individual and the corporate societal uh, responsibility as a way of our business and HR life vocation. So for PMAP and, of course, for our colleagues, not only in HR, but even in the leadership um, vocation as well. And definitely to strengthen you know, part of the thrust here also for transformation for growth and sustainability, is to strengthen, to deepen the thrust of HR as a vocation, just not just being a career or a profession. For we take care of the people and the soul of the organization, the corporation or the conglomerates that we are we, we, we belong to, and be an instrument, of course, of bringing hearts, no, touching hearts, souls closer to God through our HR vocation. Because after all. Sabi ko nga, I'm already on my third life. No? My realization is what matters after all is our soul. So we take care of that as well. Uh, HR as the soul of the organization. So thank you so much again for listening, for your openness, and um, for the opportunity, if given the chance, to continue serving you as your board treasurer. Humbly. God bless and take care everyone. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Maricor, for your presentation. So do we already have Ms. Sol Chu? We can uh, bring him back. Ms. Sol? Oh, it seems there's a connection problem. So we can now proceed to the next presenter. Let's give a round of applause to our secretary candidate. Ms. Virgie Mendoza. Good afternoon, Ms. Virgie. Good afternoon, everyone. For those who do not know me yet, I'm Virginia Buencamino Mendoza, FPM. Call me Virgie for short. I've actually been with PIMA for more than 40, 40 years and been involved in different projects, committees. So I'm currently a member of the Board of Trustee, and I'm the one in charge of the CSR committee. I've been a member of the PMAP Awards team, formerly Vice President of the Society of Fellows, former Treasurer of the PMAP Foundation, and a member of the Accreditation Council of PSOS. 
so for my other affiliations in other organizations because I believe that we should not only confine ourselves with the professional side but we should also be involved in some church and civic activities so I've been the vicarial regent of the Daughters of Mary Immaculate International in the Diocese of Manila and I am currently also a Go Negosyo Mentor Me program, mentor in the Go Negosyo Mentor Me program. So I am the treasurer of our alumni association, Batch 66, formerly the chairperson of Temporalities and the secretary of the Buen Camino Music Foundation. Next, please. Okay, so what were my significant contributions to PMAP or to the HR profession? I actively participated in the board's role of governance, assuring that projects, programs, decisions are carried out in accordance with the constitution and bylaws. So as trustee in charge of the CSR team, we conducted two major programs. The first one in the first semester was the teach or the training educators and advocates for corporate HR, where most of the participants were professors or academicians from universities and colleges. So our objective there was to uh, make sure that these professors can enhance their skills, especially in teaching their students, because they should, we believe that they should not only depend on the theories, but they should have enough exposure on the corporate aspects. So we invited several seasoned speakers and gurus, and uh, like the likes of Nolly Payo, Cesar Baltasar, Grace Abelia, um, who else? Marami Chile, Ates Villanueva, and uh, George Joby Monsalud. So they talked about uh, strategic planning, organization development, rewards and compensation, labor relations, and practically part of the CSR, which is, um, how do you call that? Strategic, uh, the stakeholders, other stakeholders of PMAP. So they touch on the different functions of the HR profession. And then during the second part of this year, we thought that there are already so many webinars that are being conducted in terms of the HR profession enhancement. So we thought of coming up with the hydroponics gardening for a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. So this helps in the mental health and also for those who are just staying at home or just working from home and those who do not know what else to do and for the plantitas and the plantitas we thought of sharing with them this kind of business for them to have also a considerable return on their investments part also of the contributions to pima because we supported the fundraising activities and conducted some trainings in some chapters but this was a long time ago and we actively participated in the career planning conferences conducted in universities. Next, please. I know a lot. So, what are the programs of service for PMAP if elected? So, as secretary, I'll perform my duties and responsibilities in accordance with the Constitution with utmost integrity and credibility. So I'll give my full support to our president in all her strategic plans provided these are in accordance with our project True North and the bylaws. And I'll make sure also that since I have had an experience in the awards to uphold the integrity of the selection process, making sure that nominees have passed the criteria and are truly deserving of the awards. So again, I shall be initiating some CSR programs that can help not only the community, but the HR practitioners as well. 
So rest assured that I will get actively involved in the programs and activities of PMAP where I can still be of service. So this is very short because I understand we are only given eight minutes. Thank you very much, everyone. And I uh, hope to see you all next year and hope that we can have a more cohesive and united team up with all the members actively participating in our advocacies and our projects. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Ms. Virgie. Thank you also for your presentation. So I'd like to check if uh, Ms. Solchu and Ms. Penny Bongato are already connected at this moment. Ms. Solchu and Ms. Penny Bongato. So it seems they're not yet uh, online. So let's now proceed to the next candidate for the national vice president position. Let's give a round of applause to Ms. Beth Nasol. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to um, ask your indulgence that I will be um, vying for the position of vice president. I've had experience in HR for more than 40 years, over 30 years with PIMA. And um, I was a former president of the Compensation Management Society of the Philippines and the ODPN, which is the Organizational Development Professional Network. Um, my experience with PMAP has um, allowed me to participate in so many other committees. And uh, this year, I have been uh, appointed as the trustee in charge for the research committee. So um, being vice president, if I may have the next slide, please. Being vice president, I think the role of the vice president is really to look after the development and learning of um, of the members no? and this is probably the reason why the AC has been tasked or has been assigned for the role. So when I was looking at the um, demographics no, of, uh, uh, of PIMA, I am seeing that um, we have about 1,024 members, no? half of which, 49% of which are coming from the large companies, and about 51% of which are coming from the SMEs. No? So there's a lot of opportunities for that. And then when I look at the Society of Fellows, you have about 285 certified certified today, no? 85 of which are associate fellows, 147 are fellows, and 53 are um, distinguished. No? And if you take a look at the demographics, you're seeing we have a very diverse um, age no, and experience, which means that there's richness in the, in the um, dirt of talent that we have in the organization. So given this, given the, uh, the data that we're seeing, what we'd like to do is, uh, if I may go to the next slide, please is to really look into two things, uh, three things rather. And to me, I think this is very supportive of what um, our would-be president is really aspiring for. And, and this, I think, is where I can really help. No? One of which is really building HR capability with focus on being data-driven, customer-centric, and agile. Why do I say data-driven? Because there's richness in, in the way we do things, it has to be purposive. And we've seen this in research when we did the hackathon last year and the conference, and when we participated in the JPP map, um, um, when they presented the case study. You know, I, I saw that there's so much that we can actually do, and maybe that's something that uh, we, can, we can continue. And as uh, I would be, uh, as Ellen has said, you know, she wanted also to see some, some form of continuity in the programs that um, we are going to do this uh, for next year. You know? Now, customer-centric, I think it's very important to focus, as um, uh, past president Jesse has mentioned. Uh, it's really the experience that really needs to be uh, sustained. No? And when we talk about Agile, there's so many things that are actually impacting us today. And I think it's very important for us to really pivot and be more action-oriented. So this is the new kind of competency that our HR community needs to have. So this is where we're going to build them. No? 
Now, since we do have a lot of chapters, no, and, and I think with 13 committee, I could see that there's so much that we can do in terms of creating collaborative avenues through linkages and partnerships, no, and providing a voice for every member of this organization, which means that we, will, we would like to see um, your Society of Fellow doing a lot of work together with the, the national and the chapters, because when we did the FGD last year, uh, amongst the chapters, you know, which is a major project of the, one of the major projects of research, we found out that we want, uh, our chapters wants to see a lot of linkages and um, con connections with the national, and they want to really um, participate in the activity. And I'm glad also last, this year rather, this year we were able to do that in some ways. No? And when we did the LIDCOM, no? One of the feedback that was given to us is that they wanted to replicate the LEADCOM, what LEADCOM is doing, no? which is the uh, every often learning sessions that we have in the chapters also, and the way we're approaching our mentoring. So I think that's something that we can actually build on and replicate. The third is really influencing the transformation of the HR practitioner as we elevate the experience of our stakeholders, community, and the environment. As you know, the HR uh, practitioner, um, the HR role, you know, our HR practitioner really has a vital role, especially so in this um, environment, you know, taking care of the earth, you know, ensuring that we elevate the way we do things. You know. And as an influencer, to me, I think we have to take advantage of that. And if we come together, connecting, partnering, linking each other, then I'm sure we will be able to transform the role of every practitioner in the, and we want to show also that PMAP is leading us into this. No? And I think that's something that moving forward, and I'm sure Ellen um, will also look into this because one of the things that she also wants is really to transform, no? not only going back to the basic, basic meaning really establishing the capability, but also ensuring that the transformation is going to happen from within and to the external. So with that, I hope that um, uh, 2022 is going to be a more very meaningful year for all of us, because I'm sure that with this uh, situation that we have and the linkages and the connectivity that we have and the partnership of the PMAP community, I'm sure PMAP is going to withstand not only the pandemic, but it will stand and sustain itself for years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Beth Nassol. So I think we already have in the house Ms. Mirasol Chu, who will uh, do the next presentation. Let's give a round of applause to Ms. Sol Chu. Hello, Sol. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so this is Mirasol Chu, uh, used to be uh, the, the PIMA president of uh, Davao chapter in 2020 and uh, currently uh, representative of the, the Mindanao. Uh, chapters. Okay, my uh, my proposed plan, no, or uh, the three point agenda that I'd like to champion. Uh, number one is the reviving chapters. So it is a fact that uh, there are chapters that were impacted by the pandemic, and they are struggling and coping up uh, to sustain the chapters uh, the chapters of the operation. So this proposed plan is uh, in close coordination, communication, and collaboration with the chapters representative. Uh, the other program that I'd like to propose is this uh, Opportunity 2.0 for uh, out-of-school youth. No? These uh, OSYs or out-of-school youths need the private sector. So the plan is to help bring these uh, OSYs to the workplace. Uh, the proposal is uh, that uh, we have to be part of the Youth uh, Development Alliance that promote a multi-sectoral partnership and collaboration and as a catalyst for youth engagement and empowerment. The third one, the, the third agenda, is, is to push forward to North Project because uh, we have an awesome focus, no? areas identified. And to North Project defined drivers, no? as, as stated in, in the slide, no? as you can see, defined drivers of the five-year development plan. So we just have to go back to the basics and focus these drivers mentioned that serve as the guiding principles that animate the crafting of strategic direction for the year. So that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Sol. And do we already have Ms. Penny Bongato? 
So let me check if she's already in the house. I think she will not be able to present this afternoon. So let's give a round of applause to the final presenter for the president position. My good friend, Ms. Ellen Fulido. Maraming maraming salamat, P.T. Obet. Uh, magandang hapon. Good afternoon to everybody in this call. Uh, medyo i-adjust ko lang yung aking screen. <laughs> Yan. Uh, good afternoon to the esteemed members of the ELECOM. Uh, we share P.P. Obet and members. P.P. Pilar is not here, of course. P.P. Jesse, whom we listened to earlier. Uh, to fellow PMAPers, uh, in here in this call and to the uh, in the FB live coverage of this uh, forum, um, fellow candidates, friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, let me just share my screen. Parang ano ya pipi obet sinabi na lahat ng aking mga fellow candidates yung lahat ng sasabihin ko. But anyway, uh, let me just share my screen. Um, my name is Ellen Fulido. I'm currently the Vice President for Human Resource and Admin Services Department of the FJ Elizalde Group. We're more known for our radio stations, our TV stations. We're into broadcast. We're the largest uh, network, not only in the Philippines, but also in Asia. I'm currently also the 2021 Vice President of the PMAP BOP and chair of the 58th annual conference. Uh, I've been an active member of PMAP since uh, year 2000. I started doing committee works in Elecom. <laughs> Ako yung taga-tabili. Ako yung taga-issue ng balot. So medyo familiar po tayo sa proseso. But I became a full-fledged member of the then PR and Publicity uh, Committee in 2004. And since then, uh, I've actively participated in all the committee works. Um, Errand Girl, Friday Girl, lahat ng, lahat ng classing works no, in, the, in that committee. And I recall uh, si incoming trustee John Suniga uh, becoming the trustee in charge. I, I'm not sure if it's 2011 or 2010. Uh, napasubo siya dun sa committee namin, now called Media and Communications. Dahil siguro taga media kami, hindi siya makasingit sa amin lahat. What with P.P. Barbie, P.P. Uh, Jimmy, Jesse, Badet, everybody there, and P.P. Obet also. Uh, he had the baptism of fire with us. So, um, Siyempre, because I'm in media, definitely I'm very, very active in media and communications. But I've been involved also with other committees like GMM. Uh, we won the award, uh, the Committee of the Year Award in 2011 alongside the PR and Publicity Committee. I already have five Committee of the Year Awards <laughs> um, during, uh, during this time. Um, Four of which have three of which are in uh, media and communication. I became a board of trustee in 2015 during the term of PP Obet. Medyo nagbakaawa po siya sa akin, and I was the last one to fill up the the vacancy. So I I I would have wanted to just be an ordinary member serving PMAP uh, in any in any which way I can in in my capacity. No? Um, however, hindi ko matanggihan itong mama na ito. So, umiiyak na siya. So, I accepted the, the challenge. And since then, I've been, um, I hope I've been contributing to the, to the advocacies of PIMA uh, since uh, PP Obet encouraged me to do so. Uh, we crafted Makatao Awards during the term of PP Jimmy. So, it's his brainchild. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to hold a Makatao Awards uh, since the pandemic started and up to this time, but we plan to give recognition to the different media companies who have uh, contributed a lot, especially during the pandemic. Uh, we hope that this uh, will be done come January of this year. Uh, I was also given an award for media excellence by 
by the PMAP Makatao Committee, uh, Awards Committee. And uh, as I said earlier, um, I've been very much involved with uh, the annual conference directorate also. So medyo yung annual conference natin this year is not something new for me because I've been there ever since. And I hope to continue contributing along that line. Um, if elected, what do I plan to, to do for Pima? Simple lang po. Um, we know that we've been through rough times uh, in 2021 and we hope to foster uh, camaraderie. Instead of divisiveness, uh, we, we would like to push through for cohesiveness among the members and the different committees within the organization. Um, simple lang, because this pandemic has affected us so badly in um, big or small companies, every individual, we're, we're all affected. Um, and it's a pity that a lot of our co-workers, colleagues, some businesses closed, workers were displaced. And being in Pima for quite a, a long time already, siguro mga 20 years now or more, I've seen that well, we're a formidable organization and we hope to continue being the premier organization in human resource. But I see that given this time that we're, you know, the government is easing the restrictions. As I speak now, there's a breaking news that two, that the two um, uh, people who arrived in AIA in December 1 are now tested positive for Omicron virus. I don't know if there's going to be a star regulation again coming in but we hope that with the easing of the restrictions we will be able to push through with our plan programs and uh, advocacies but um if elected i would just like to go for pmap at 360 degrees meaning as we move and try to recover from this pandemic let's go back to the basics all right. Before we were on ground, we were doing face-to-face -face, uh, activities, advocacies, learning programs, etc. We're providing services face-to-face. -face. Then came the pandemic. We went full blast online. So things that we used to just see right there in the horizon. We're talking about um, uh, industrial revolution 4.0. Everything happened overnight and you have to be tech savvy over a period of like one day. People are, you know, seeing each other virtually and we're doing our programs virtually. When I say going back to the basics, this is what Miss Beth was saying earlier. Going back to the basics is not going back to the old times, but, you know, putting more emphasis on what are the essentials that this organization would need. Okay, when I say, what are the essentials? And then we, you know, it's a whole process. We just go around in circle, but every time that we move around in circle, we have to continue improving ourselves. We have to continue collaborating and building linkages. With core, with our core, uh, with people as our core, let's foster this collaboration and linkages. Because, um, wait lang ah, kasi yung aking screen, iuurong ko to. And to do this, uh, let me just take up some of the focus areas that we'd like to uh, put emphasis into. First, we need to recover financially. Just to share with you, since last year, every time I would sign um, uh, requests for approvals of budgets, of disbursements, my first question to Rene would always be, do we have enough money to pay for this? You know, the pandemic has affected not only the businesses, uh, the workers, but our own PMAP as well. You know, we had to cut back on expenses. If you cannot increase your revenue, the wisest thing to do is cut back on your expenses. That's the most logical thing to do. And even our own professional staff had to tighten their belts. They had to forego some of the benefits and the privileges that they used to enjoy when pre-pandemic. The first thing that we need to do is to really recover financially. We cannot continue with our programs 
our advocacies and whatever it is without money to sustain our operations. You know what? If you go to the PMAP building, I was there during the annual conference. That week long, I was there and I saw that there is a need for repairs and maintenance. That, that was set aside. Alam nyo, nahuhulog na yung sili. But that had, had to be set aside because our priority is to provide for our own professional staff. Really. So the, the first order of the day is to really come up with ways and means to really generate revenue. And I think we have a lot of programs that we could monetize. If, you know, this, all of the things that I will present are directly related to each other because they are contributing um, to other programs within these focus areas. Um, while in 2021, during the last BOT meeting, we saw that, you know, we're afloat, we're breaking even, that shouldn't be enough. Hindi tayo pwedeng makampante na, okay, meron tayong kinita na konti. We have to continue generating income, whether we like it or not. We're now being asked by BIR to pay our taxes. While we claim that we are a non-stock, non-profit organization, we're still paying our taxes. We're paying our government dues. And we need to have enough funds to pay for them also. So with your, with your support, with everybody here, let us help PMAP regain its financial footing. Number two, program continuity and enhancement. I was saying earlier that we've already launched, even virtually, a lot of very good programs. The hackathon that was launched by, by Ms. Beth and the, the research group, the, the advocacies of the LPRIR committee, which I'm a part of, member din po ako ng IR committee, and I've attended legislations already in both Congress and Senate representing PIMA in various uh, bills being passed in the discussion, especially on uh, the plight of the digital workers and the media personnel. Um, you know, we have to continue doing these programs. Ako yung naniniwala na if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You just have to continuously improve it. You have to continuously enhance these programs in order to um, serve the members of PMAP. And therefore, if you have good programs, you have good advocacy, hindi lang good, very good, excellent maybe, we will be able to monetize them. All right? Good programs, especially done virtually using our digital assets, our digital platforms. You know, we have a a uh, whole slew of very good speakers, resource persons, whom we could use as influencers in the HR profession, then we can monetize. If only we, we know how to use data analytics, we, we know how to use the metrics, then we can populate, we can populate our, our digital uh, assets, you know, and use them and use them as packages, as value adding packages for potential sponsors and to increase registrations among members, uh, increase enrollment into our programs. Kailangan may ino-offer tayong kakaiba, hindi yung eto lang siya, pakete na siya. We have to be creative. We have to be innovative. We have to think out of the box. We have to remove the box. Sa panahon ngayon, naranasan natin yung hirap magmula last year. Almost two years into the pandemic, the way to go is to be creative about the way we do things. Hindi na pwede yung nakakahun lang. Hindi na susulat lang lahat sa libro. You have... P.P. Jesse was talking about being strategic. That is being strategic. You think out of the box. Remove the box. Break down the silos. Hindi na ganun ngayon ang ang sistema na babasahin mo lang sa libro, ikakakot. Alright? Next. Chapter engagement. You know, I've seen this and I was invited several times to uh, speak or as a resource person to some of the chapters that we have. And I realized that, and I've seen 
because during siguro mga pre-prod, pre tech run, I would ask, what about chapter this, chapter that? No? Kasi these are programs being organized by the big chapters like the ones of Ms. Uh, Ms. Sol Chu, no? sa Davao, again, the Oro, Cebu. What about the smaller chapters? Where are they? Hindi sila active. Eh. They don't even have offices to start off with. Hindi kagaya ng malalaki. And so what happens? Are we are we keeping them? Are we keeping these uh, chapters just to retain the numbers? Are they just there for stature so that we we are rightfully called a national PMAP? Dapat hindi. Dapat hindi ganun. Dapat yung maliliit na chapters are also actively involved. And you don't really have to go to national or rely on national to be there, to be visible. When I say on ground, you have to be vis visible on ground. Paano? If you've seen, and I think Pipi Obet commented on this, if you've seen a post made by the Baholod chapter, they, they had this Pima Pasco for the kids, for the, for the, the less privileged children. That's the kind of thing that PMAP should be doing also. We shouldn't, we shouldn't just be thought leaders. You know, we shouldn't just be running programs. And I think our, our chapters, even the smaller ones, can take an active role in this. You know, you just have to partner. Use your influence in partnering with LGUs, uh, the local government agencies, local businesses, local schools and universities to come up with CSR. Wala tayong ganun. Wala akong nakikitang ganun. Puro lang online. Dapat ang pinopost natin sa ating social media are the activities that we do that are value adding to the community where we belong. Hindi na, wag na tayong lumayo. Wag na natin palakihin ng gusto. Hindi na natin kailangan maging national. We are here in the national to support the the smaller ones, right there in the provinces, right there in the regions, right? So, Miss Beth was talking about sustainability. Talk about environment. Come up with like basic clean up drive, uh, tree planting, you know, these this are value adding and you serve your community and you preserve your environment. You give you, you take part in livelihood projects or giving uh, opportunities to the out-of-school youth so that through TESDA or other academic institutions or other partners that we have may provide education, may provide opportunities in the small chapters that we have all over the country. Let's not just make them numbers. Okay. Let's make our chapters, big or small, very relevant in their own provinces, in their own regions. And they contribute towards our goal in the national PIMA. Next, capability building of MSMEs. I was invited to be part of the national judging panel. Uh, in the 2021 National Productivity Competition organized by the Department of Labor and Employment and the National Productivity and Wages Committee. You know what? The MSMEs, grabe, yung program nila is, uh, their, their team was bounce back better. So what have they been doing and what did they do in order to stay afloat? You know what? There was this small HR consultancy firm that was established in 2019 by a group of young people. By a group of young people. You know what? While a lot of businesses have closed, they had to retrench a lot of people. You know, this small, small HR consult consultancy firm even expanded and added more people in their organization. Why? You know, their key innovativeness and creativity in their, in their offerings for, for their clients. Shouldn't that, shouldn't that be the way an HR person think? Kasi nga, you, you have to see opportunity. Sinasabi natin lagi to, when there's adversity, there's opportunity. Let's capitalize on that. Ang daming magagaling sa PIMA. Bilib ako. 
ang dami. We just have to know um, who these people are, people who can influence, people who can help. Let's stop all of them. That's why when you say you build collaboration, you build linkages, dapat alam natin kung sino magaling dito. We, we, we should have a database of, of all these talents that we have in PIMA. Kasi nakikita lang natin, tayo-tayo, sila-sila, kayo-kayo. Diba? There, I am sure there are already 1,001 talented HR people waiting to be top by the national team. Let's share these talents to our MSNBs. If, if, if I you know, sit down in this board, for 2022, I would like to highlight the accomplishments of these MSMEs. Alam niyo itong mga MSMEs na, na to, sila na yung owner, sila na yung finance person, sila yung HR, sila yung operation, sila yung marketing, sila yung sales. So as HR practitioners, huwag natin sulohin yung, yung talents and knowledge natin, yung thought leadership. When I say capability building, share it with them. You know, make them succeed. Ito yung bubuhay sa atin eh. Hindi sila malalaki pero ang dami nila. And you know, if if we do that, I think more of them would like to join Pima. Those whom I've encountered in uh, during that judging day would like to join Pima. Nahihiya sila kasi parang hindi naman kasi kami malaki, Ms. Ellen. Hindi mo kailangan maging malaki. While we would like to maintain that, ano, uh, that, that image that we are a prominent organization, sana magkaroon din ng feeling yung mga maliliit na kahit eto, eto yung tima po, pero I belong. I belong. Maliit ako but I'm included. I'm part of this large organization. Right? And lastly, sorry ho ah, kasi medyo teki talaga ako na tao because that's 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 my my life in the organization kasi nabubuhay ho kami sa teknolohiya and i've seen no during the pmap annual conference i i was just blessed i say blessed dahil um man, my management my president no less than the president allowed me uh to tap our digital media team to help me out in in staging a show for PMAP during the annual conference. So we brought with us our video editing equipment, camera, lahat ng chroma, dinala namin doon sa PMAP Center. And I've seen that, um, I was told by Jeff, our IT head, sana naman meron din ganyan yung PMAP. You know why? You know why I'm saying upgrade our technology, advance our technology, and I'm talking about hardware and software here, platforms and applications that we could make use of in order to monetize our plans and programs. We've been digitally adept for almost two years now in running our programs. I say we have to continuously improve, continue enhancing, populate our digital assets, populate our social media sites. It's a pity, you know, I was talking to jo Jovenir Bataikan the other week and we were talking about, we were talking about the people manager on CAM. Incidentally po in 2018, I was the one who made it as an e-magazine because we're spending hundreds of thousands in publication, in publishing the, the copies of the magazine. Not to mention, uh, we spend a lot also in, um, uh, you know, uh, shipping them. <laughs> Ang laki po ng gasto. So what we did was to go online. And you know what? I was using data analytics at that time. It was 2018. And it was 2018 during uh, my, my time as a board of trustee when we started drafting also through North. Miss um, Maricor was saying earlier that for as long as the programs and Miss Virgie also pala was saying that they should be aligned to True North. Let me tell you that all of these things that we're going to do are all aligned to True North. Wala po tayong babaguhin, pagagandahin lang po natin. Okay? Um, we have to invest in technology. Nakita po natin, you know, I, I want to share this because during the time of PPO, bet, 
uh, there were a lot of discussions about building an academy, uh, putting up a structure uh, for us to be called a non-profit, non-stock organization. Ang hirap po eh, di ba? Hindi, ngayon yung 12 million, we have a 12 million reserve fund. No? It's an untouched fund. Supposedly earmarked for the building up of the academy. Pero what happened? Yung 12 million, kulang pa po yun. Yung bahay nga na tinatayo dito sa likod namin. Eh. 15 million, bahay lang po yun. So parang, maybe, maybe I don't know if it can be done. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I hope that the elders here, the experts would be able to guide us. If I don't know if we can repurpose part of the restricted funds in investing them to technology because I don't think that's the way to go. The way to go is to really use technology in the way we do our learning programs, in the way we provide services to our constituents, to our members in PIMA. So we really have to invest in technology because it has worked for us. But we, we, we cannot be obsolete. You know, technology um, advances every minute, every hour, and we have to keep a pace with the advancement in technology in order for us to really serve well our, our members in Pima. And so therefore, my dear friends and colleagues in Pima, I would like to encourage everyone to, to take part it's, this is not the job only of the BOP. Everybody has a say. We're all here to just navigate. One year is not enough. Medyo, bakit ko sinasabing back to basics? Hindi po tayo politiko eh. Ang nangyayari kasi sa atin sa PIMA, every time na we change our leadership, nababago din yung programa. ba? One year is not enough to really see the fruits of your labor. But if we're seeing that this is good, we're doing a good job, kudos to the members of the 21 B, 2021 BOT for doing a great job. Kumita tayo kahit pa paano, nakakapagbayad po tayo ng ating operating expenses. But we shouldn't just sit back and relax. We cannot be complacent. We have to continuously move forward and build this organization so that the future leaders would have something. We let, Let's pay pave the way for, for the future leaders to continue doing a good job for PMAP. So we're not just going to be like 65. It's, it should be 65 and beyond. And with that, uh, I'd like to enjoin everyone to please uh, share with us the experience in 2022. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ellen Fulido po at your service. All right, thank you very much, uh, Miss Ellen, for your uh, presentation, especially for your drive in uh, various advocacies. So at this point, let us give uh, a round of applause to Miss Penny Bongato. Hi, Penny. Hi, P. Obet, and I do apologize for being late. I just came back from Makati Med. Um, health is wealth at this time. So my name is Penny, Ana Maria Penny Bongato. I'm running for the position of trustee. I have been a trustee of BMAP for the past couple of years, on, off, on, off. But what I have been really very, very, very passionate about is industry academe and the people at BMAP know this. And um, have been with HR for a long, long time, but I am, what, what I, as, I still do is I am also a part-time faculty of De La Salle College of St. Benil teaching human resource management. I'm very proud to be a, an academician and an HR practitioner at that because I believe that it is through education that we are able to build the future leaders of our country, the future leaders of our organization, especially in the human resource area field. It's, it's very surprising that yesterday I received a call from um, former USEC, former USEC, I had to think about his position, former USEC of the Department of ICT, uh, Information and Communication Technology, Mon Ibrahim. And he was asking if 
Analytics Association of the Philippines could partner with BMAP in the future because there's so much needs, so many needs for data scientists, and we know that. However, the understanding of data scientists and data engineers and data analysts are all rumbled up. And it's only through educating our members, whether they're big companies, medium sized so small companies, and as, as, men, as may, may have been mentioned by some of my colleagues, that we're going into the digital world and artificial intelligence and data analytics will be key. And we have to make sure that our students learn this and graduates are able to understand that these are the needs of the future. I've been working on the industry academe portion of PMAP for the past, since 2009 when we made the video, which we called Book Smart is Not Enough. And it was that time that I fell in love with education because I know how important education is. And the reason why I am running again for the board, aside from, you know, knowing the importance and, and being asked to run, is that I know I can contribute. I feel that I can still have so many things to contribute. And my network in education, my network with the different associations of Kakopea, of PACU, of say uh, of the different associations in, in the academe, my affiliation to the biggest to the biggest industry in the Philippines, my affiliation with IBTAP, the IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines, of which I was former director of, of talent develop executive director for talent development, which allowed me to help bring jobs to the Philippines and which allowed me to create, uh, allowed us, not me, allowed the industry to create a curriculum in college that would help our college student, students be ready for employability in the BPO industry. And that was what made us, help us, IBPAP at the time, my last year of employment at IBPAP when we received the People Program of the Year. I'm very passionate about that because I know that our youth are the are our future. Our the youth are our future for HR. And we have, as I mentioned, I teach in human resources that we are able to teach them maybe not the, the real technical HR skills, because even the technical HR skills are changing because of digi digitizing HR as well, because of artificial intelligence. But even just teaching them how to analyze and even the soft skills of problem solving, critical thinking, innovation, teamwork, collaboration is so important. I currently, I am also a coach. I am a, how do I say it? I am a Associate Certified Coach of the International Coaches Coaching Federation. I got my credential, I am a credential coach, and I aspire to be moving up in the coaching field. And I'm also now into team coaching and really helping our team leaders become better managers because they are people managers as well. It's not all about the metrics, it's all about the people. And with, with PMAP, I believe that we, we together with our colleagues in the industry, our colleagues in the different in industry, in the different professions, can help build better leaders for the organizations and make all organizations more relevant and transform them to, to the next level um, that we are seeing. 
everybody may have been talking about the next normal, the new normal, whatever normal it is. We're not going back. Traffic is back. I tell you, I just came out. I just came back from Makati Med and traffic is back. But it's not going to be the same. So we really need to be more active in collaborating. And collaborating with schools, as many of you know, takes forever. But we cannot give up. We cannot give up because we're giving up. We cannot give up on the youth. The youth is our future. So I'm very, very excited to be to be running for the board once again. And my heart still is has always been with Pima. By the way, I'm an engineer by education, and I have shifted careers from from engineering to many others until I ended up in HR, the profession that I fell in love with. And that's why I'm back here to serve the association the best way I can. So my name is Penny, but you'll see there Anna Maria, that's my full name. And I'm, I'm just glad to be here. Sorry again for being late. Health is important as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Penny. So ladies and gentlemen, we heard and we felt how passionate our candidates are for the incoming year of PMAP in 2022. So again, let's give a round of applause to Ms. Penny Bogato, Ms. Lily Quintans, Ms. Bebe Reyes, Ms. Sol Chu, and Attorney John Zuniga for the trustee position. And for the officer positions, let's give again another round of applause for Ms. Maricor Militante as treasurer, for Ms. Virgin Mendoza for the secretary post, and for the national vice president, Ms. Beth Nason, and lastly, for the national president, Ms. Ellen Folido. Maraming salamat sa inyong patuloy na commitment at suporta at higit sa lahat ang paglilingkod sa ating pinakamamahal na PMAP, the People Management Association of the Philippines, especially to the HR community of this country. So yan mga kaibigan, marami salamat din po sa lahat ng umaten. We have a total of 47 a while ago attendees. As of this time, we have 38. So yan, baka iba na wala sa online connection. So maglalabas po ng uh, other updates ang Elico for the other developments. At uh, nirequest po din namin na sana tulungan nyo po ang PIMA professional staff na baka kuha tayo ng mga proxy forms para na sa ganun ay magkaroon tayo ng quorum. Yan. Yan po ang nasasaad sa ating PIMA Constitution and Bylaws. At lahat po ng galaw ng PIMAP Elecom for this year are always anchored on our Constitution and Bylaws. Kaya nga natuloy itong ating pagpupulong ngayong hapon kasi po ito ay talagang nakasaad na dapat na magkaroon ng candidates forum. So with that, I pray that each one of you together with your loved ones will always be guided, will always be provided with the graces and protection of our dear Lord. Stay healthy and safe and most of all, be happy always. On behalf of my uh, esteemed um, past president, Attorney Pilar Almira and Jesse Robustillo, we are now signing off. Take care and see you soon. Love ya. Bye. Thank Hi, you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, final photo. Oh, final photo. Oh, final photo again, Richard. Okay. So. Salamat, Richard. So for uh, all the. Miss. Oh, on the yeah, video. Okay, kindly turn on your video so we can have a photo with some of the candidates who are not yet here early this yes. afternoon. And I also would like to acknowledge the presence of our PIMA Executive Director, Rene Yes, Idi Rene, magandang hapon po. 
Hello everyone. Good luck to everyone. I heard from start to end. Thank right. you. Sorry, EDD pala kita na acknowledge. Yeah, okay lang yun. Ganun talaga matanda. Sino <laughs> ikaw? <laughs> Just for this uh, moment. Jeff, kindly turn on your video, please. Okay. Maybe okay. they, they're having difficulties with their videos. I'll, I'll count on three, two, one. Smile, everyone. Okay, let me save it. Ano wakil ne? Bye. 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 See Thanks you soon. everyone. Nice to meet Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome.